a very important topic <clears throat> and it's um, quite uh, intense. It takes concentration to understand it. Okay? The theme is the Bible supports post-tribulation rapture. How to prepare for the Great Tribulation. Now the Great Tribulation um, is uh, prophesied by Jesus. In Matthew 24, 21 on, he said, for, there, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. nor ever shall be. So Jesus said that there will be great tribulation after, uh, you know, the, um, first is the, the wars, the, the famine, earthquakes, and then the Christians will be persecuted. And then there will be the great tribulation that has never ever happened uh, since the beginning of the world. And it will never be another tribulation like this. And immediately after the tribulation of these days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its lights. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Uh, so here it says that um, there will be the Great Tribulation and after the Tribulation is over then the sign of Jesus Christ will appear and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. That means all the people of the world will be very, uh, they will be afraid to see Jesus coming back and they will see Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So this is talking about that Jesus will appear and before that happened that Jesus will come back and appear to the, all the people of the world and all the people of the world will see him and the unbelievers will be afraid and before that there will be a great tribulation so there is a time of great tribulation before the second coming of Jesus now the very important point is oh, okay let me uh, explain this passage also first Thessalonians 4 7 16 for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up that means raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and this and thus we shall always be with the Lord so here we talk about that Jesus would descend from heaven and then there will be a trumpet of God and the dead in Christ that means all the Christians who have died will rise first then we who are alive and remain and then so there are two groups of Christians. First would be those who are dead in Christ, who are dead already, and the live Christians. So two groups of Christians. The dead Christians will rise, and then the live Christians will be together, uh, will be caught up together with them, with them, that means together, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So all the uh, dead Christians will rise from the dead together with the live Christians will be kept uh, raptured and meet the Lord and will be with the Lord forever. So this is the rapture. Okay, this is this passage talks about the rapture clearly. Now in the previous uh, passage also talk about the rapture, but uh, here it's not as clear. There Jesus said, uh, Matthew 24, that we read earlier, that Jesus will appear to all the people. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. So here is one will be taken. One will be taken up 
to Jesus, and the the other one is left behind. And two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, and the other left. Also, the women one will be taken to the Lord, will be raptured, and the other left behind. Now, very important that Jesus talk about the second coming of Jesus. Here is the second coming, and then there will be a great tribulation. And then there is a、um, a theory that the rapture will happen before the tribulation. That's called pre-tribulation rapture. Pre that means before, and then there is another theory called mid. Tribulation rapture. That means in the middle of the tribulation, the Christians will be raptured. Now, if Christians are raptured before the tribulation or in the middle of the tribulation, now they say that that's the second half of the tribulation is three and a half years. That is the、uh, very powerful tribulation, a lot of suffering, and they said that the first three and a half years. Is lighter, but actually,、um, there is no clear evidence of this first three and a half years. Now, that's another study of Daniel chapter nine, verse twenty-four on, because there it talks about he will make uh, man, uh, many. Uh, he will have a covenant, make covenant with many people. Actually,、uh, it has been talked about. Talking about Christ, it's not talking about the Antichrist. But then,、uh, the dispensationalist, dispensationalism is a belief,、uh, and dispensationalist are the people who believe in dispensationalism, and they think that that is the three and a half years is uh, the um, the time when the Antichrist will make many covenant with. Uh, with many nation, but that's not supported. That's because、uh, it has been talking about talking about Christ. Why does it suddenly change to Antichrist? So it should be talking about that Christ make covenant with many many people. It talks about in the New Testament period. So the three and a half years of great tribulation of great suffering. Now, if we are raptured. Before the tribulation or in the middle of tribulation, it actually is good news because then Christians don't have to suffer in the tribulation period if that's true. But the Bible does not support that, and I'm going to show that、uh, in the Bible study today. I'm going to show that step by step how the Bible supports tribulation at the time when Jesus comes back. That means Christians have to. Face the tribulation, and the tribulation is great suffering. And how can we stand firm in the period of tribulation? So, it's very important for us to understand when the tribulation will happen, because this will affect whether we will go through tri tribulation、uh, or not. You know, it's very important to find out when the rapture happened. That's what I meant. When the rapture happened, whether the rapture happens. When Jesus comes back, this is what the Bible supports. Or whether it's before the tribulation, it would be good news. Then we suddenly will disappear. You probably have heard of many people talking about this. When you search tribulation、uh, or rapture、uh, on the internet, you find many people talking about we're waiting for the rapture. Any time it could come, and then we、we'll、will disappear and go to heaven. Now, if that's the case, then. It will be a good news, but if not, we have to be prepared for the great tribulation. But still, in the great tribulation period, Jesus is in control. So when we love God and follow God, we don't have to worry because He will protect us. He will give us strength even when we have to face persecution and face death. Jesus will help us. Now, why do I have to teach this teaching? Why Why is it important for me to teach this? <clears throat> Because many people now, this idea of pre-tribulation rapture that the rapture happens. Rapture means taken up into the air. The Christian taken up into the air. If the rapture happens before the tribulation, then Christians 
don't have to worry about the great tribulation. But if we have to face the, the tribulation, we have to learn how to prepare for the great tribulation. And many Christians are not ready because they thought that they would disappear at that time. But actually many people don't study the Bible and they were deceived. I'll show you how from the Bible is very clear. Actually, there are a number of writers who wrote books to support post-tribulation rapture. That rapture happens when Jesus comes back. Now, some people think there are three theories. Well, you just choose one to believe. Let me tell you, there is only one time that the Christian will be raptured. There won't be three times. So, we have to find out which one is true. And it's very, very important to find out which one is true. Okay, now, first, I want to talk about this Greek word, word parousia, because it will appear in the text, parousia in Greek, and it uh, transliterate in English is parousia. This word, now, you can search 3952 Greek on the internet, and you can find this word parousia, and then it will show that when it talks about Jesus, it's all talking about His glorious return at the end of the world. It all talks about His glorious return at the end of the world. Okay, now we're going to go through these passages carefully. So I hope that you pay attention and watch each word carefully. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, beginning. Now, brethren, concerning the coming that he, here is the word parousia, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him. So here Paul is talking about two things concerning the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, His parousia, and our gathering together to Him. That means the Christian will be gathered to Him. So he's talking about one thing because he then talked about the day of Christ. That the day of Christ when these two things will happen, that the coming of Jesus Christ, Jesus will come back. Now the Bible never talk about two coming back of Jesus. It's only one. But the dispensationalist, that means people who believe that there is a pre-tribulation rapture, that they believe that there is a rapture of the Christians, the Christians will disappear before the Great Tribulation. Great Tribulation is the great suffering in the world. They said there are two parousia, two second coming. Actually, the Bible doesn't support that. I'm going to show you that, uh, that this parousia here is talking about Jesus' glorious coming after the Great Tribulation. Okay, so we have to be very familiar with the terms. Tribulation is a suffering, the time of suffering, the great tribulation. And the rapture is that the Christians are taken up into the air to meet the Lord. These two terms, you must be very familiar. So when I talk about tribulation, you know that's the great suffering period. And the rapture is that the Christians will be taken up into the air. So Paul was talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the parousia, His second coming, and our gathering together to Him. That will be, will be gathered to Him. Now, Paul used the word our, that means it includes Himself. Now, I'm going to show you in the four passages, he always used the word we or our to show that He is part of it too. So, Paul also, together with the other Christians, will be gathered together to Jesus. And then, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Because some people were telling the Christians, the day of, the, of Christ has come already. And Paul said, no. Do not be shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit, or any spirit telling you that, or by word, or by any letter, as if it is from us, is not from us, as though the day of Christ has come. Let, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day, 
So that day, he's talking about the day when Jesus will come back and also the Christians will be gathered to him. And also that is the day of Christ. That day. So he's referring back to the day of Christ, referring back to the coming of Jesus Christ and we are gathering to him. That day will not come unless a few things happen. The first thing is the falling away or called the apostasy. That means many Christians fall away from God. Many Christians, they forsake the faith, give up the faith. That's the first thing that will happen. The second thing is happen that we call the Antichrist. The man of sin is revealed. He is also called the son of prediction. Prediction means damnation, damnation forever, that he is damned forever that the antichrist now why is he called that final antichrist because he opposes and exalts himself above all that is called god he exalts himself above all gods or that is worship anyone that is worships so that he sits as god in the temple of god so this person will sit in god's temple as god he says that he is God and many people worship him and think that he is God. So this is the final Antichrist and also he will be destroyed by Jesus directly as below. He will show himself that he is God. He says that he is God but he is not God. And then we jump to verse 8 and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. That means Jesus will come back and from his mouth, from his breath, breath, he will consume the Antichrist and destroy with the brightness of his coming. He will destroy the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. Now destroy doesn't mean he will disappear. It means he will destroy his power and then throw him into hell. So he will destroy him. He will destroy his power and Jesus will come back. So Paul was saying that concerning the coming back of Jesus and for us to gather together with to Jesus that we will be, we'll be gathered. So that's like rapture. We'll be gathered to him, we'll be taken to him. And it includes Paul. That I ask you not to be uh, influenced by people who said that the day of Christ has come. Because the day will not come. The day of Christ will not come. The day when Jesus comes back and the Christians will be gathered to him, including Paul, will not come until there is a great apostasy. Many people fall away from God. And also the second thing is the Antichrist, the man of sin, and the son of prediction, the son of damnation, the one who sits in the temple of God, pretending to be God, that he will be. Uh, uh, directly judged by Christ. He will be destroyed by the brightness of His coming. So the day of Christ will not come until the apostasy comes and also the Antichrist will come and will be destroyed by Christ on the day of His second coming. He will destroy Him. And that's the time when we will be gathered to Jesus. So here, when will, be, will Christians be gathered to Jesus? It will happen after the great apostasy. Many people fall away. And also after the Antichrist appears, and then at the time when Jesus will come back to destroy the Antichrist. So what it means here is that it will be after the Antichrist is active that the Christian will be brought together, gathered together to Jesus Christ. Now, when is the Antichrist active? He's active in the Great Tribulation period. If you read Revelation chapter 13, it talks about two beasts, that one of them is the Antichrist, the one uh, that, you know, that we'll find out which one is it because uh, there's one that has the image and then uh, uh, I mean uh, I'm sorry that he was killed and then he 
seems to be killed and then he uh, it seems that he rises from the dead but actually he did not die and people thought he rises from the dead and then they worship him now this should be the antichrist and then there is another beast the beast could be a system because it has many horns and this horn stand for king so it could be a system of the antichrist and there is one person that died and uh, he um, seems to die and then people thought he died and then he he came back to life and people thought he rose from the dead and then people worship him as God so the antichrist is active in the great tribulation so it's at the end of the great tribulation that the antichrist will be destroyed by Jesus Christ and that is the time when Christians will be gathered to him including Paul now Paul will be in the rapture we'll see that in 2nd Thessalonians I'm sorry in 1st Thessalonians Thessalonians chapter 4 Paul himself will be raptured and when will he be raptured he'll be raptured after Jesus comes back to destroy the Antichrist and the Antichrist is active in the Great Tribulation so Paul will be raptured after the Antichrist is destroyed that is after the Great Tribulation after the great suffering of the world the period of suffering of the world and then Jesus will destroy the Antichrist and then at that time Paul and the other Christians will be gathered to him this passage is very very clear when will Paul be gathered to Jesus and the other Christians it's after the Great Tribulation after the period when the Antichrist was active when Jesus Christ comes back and destroy the Antichrist that is at the end of the world okay so this is the first passage second uh, okay now so actually here I'm just summarizing what I just said okay this is another passage first this first Corinthians chapter 15 50 verse 52 on in a moment in the twinkling of an eye of a of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written death is swallowed up in victory now this is another passage that Paul used the word we that he is part of it in a moment in a twinkling of an eye in a single moment at the last trumpet so here it talks about the trumpet the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible now here is talking about the Christians only the Christians will be raised on the dead and they become incorruptible because non-christians will be raised and they will be corruptible their body is not glorified but the christians will be raised from the dead incorruptible now in this passage passage paul doesn't talk about the non-christians at all uh, it doesn't mean they're not raised from the dead at the same time it just means he doesn't talk about it here and from the other passages actually it support that christians and non-christians are raised from the dead at the same time that we won't talk about at this point uh, and the dead will be raised incorruptible it's talk about Christians they will be raised from the dead and they will be incorruptible that means you know now we have sickness that we're corruptible that you know our body will rot away when we die that we are corruptible but at that time will be incorruptible that our body will not decay we will not have sickness anymore so for this corruptible must put on incorruption that will put on incorruption we cannot we cannot have sickness or death anymore and this mortal body mortal means it will die it can die must 
uh, it means uh, can die, okay, we can die. The mortal must put on immortality. Put on immortality, that means we cannot die anymore. So that's for the Christians, that Christians cannot die anymore. So when this corruption, corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Then when the Christians are raised from the dead, will be changed to become incorruptible and immortal, that we cannot corrupt, and we live forever, we cannot die anymore. And then it is fulfilled, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, in uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, it says that as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So in the Great Tribulation, the beast, the Antichrist, will kill the Christians who don't worship the image of the beast. Now, God will protect a number of Christians that they won't die, they, they won't be killed. So in the Tribulation period, we trust in God's protection. And then there are some who are killed, but then God will guide them. God will give them strength. We'll talk about that later if we have time. That God will give them strength, will speak through them so that uh, Jesus said, you know, don't worry about what to say because the Holy Spirit will, will teach you what to say at that time. Now, if the Holy Spirit will teach us what to say, He will also guide us to protection, how we can have protection and also guide us how to have food because at that time people have to worship the beast and have the seal of the beast before they can buy food buy or sell so at that time for most people the only way they can buy food is when they worship the beast and receive the seal of the beast on the right hand or on the forehead but the christians cannot do that because once we do that we lose salvation it says very clearly, there was one angel that announced to the whole world that this would happen, that we cannot uh, worship the beast or have the seal of the beast. If not, we will not, we will go to, uh, the people who worship will go to hell. So, but those who, um, who do, don't worship the image of the beast will be killed. That means in the Great Tribulation, Christian will be killed. And if the time when death is swallowed up in victory, there's no more death. That means the Great Tribulation is over. During the Great Tribulation, Christians will be killed. But after the Great Tribulation, no more Christians will be killed. That death is swallowed up in victory. There is no more death. For Christians, death doesn't exist anymore. It's swallowed up. It's like you eat up something. Death is eaten up. It disappeared. It disappeared. There is no more death in victory. That means God is in victory. The Christians are in victory. That has, has swallowed up, it has swallowed up death in victory, it has won the bat battle against death. That means Christians don't have to face death anymore. And Christians will be killed during the Great Tribulation. That means will be raised from the dead and transformed. That is a time after the Great Tribulation. Okay, this verse again set the time when Paul will be changed to be incorruptible. It is a time when there is no more death. No more death happens after the Great Tribulation, the period of suffering. That means is when Jesus' second coming, after the uh, the great suffering, the great tribulation of the world, and then death is swallowed up. The Christian will be raised from the dead and together with those who are living. Now, Paul did not know that whether he would die or not because Jesus has said that uh, all this will come true in this generation. And some people thought that means the physical generation. Now, what Jesus meant was that the destruction of Jerusalem will happen the you know the uh, uh, what we call the the prefigure of the second coming is the destruction of Jerusalem 
at that time will happen within the same generation. That passage, Jesus actually was talking about uh, the destruction of Jerusalem. And Paul at that time did not know whether, you know, when Jesus will come back, he thought he will live to that time. That's why he put, we shall be changed. He doesn't talk about, we will be raised from the dead. He didn't say that. I will be raised from the dead. But now we know that Paul has died already. So Paul will be among those who will be raised from the dead. And then he will become incorruptible. And all the Christians who are alive will be changed. So all the Christians who die together with the Christians who are living will be changed to be incorruptible. And that is a time when there is no more death. And that is after the Great Tribulation because Christians will die during the Tribulation. So. The time when Christians will be changed is after the Great Tribulation. Okay, and then this passage about the Great Tribulation, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16. Now these passages I encourage you to study in depth for yourself. Now I study it for you and you can study it for yourself to find out the, uh, the explanation for yourself. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice, of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. Here it talks about trumpet again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about the last trumpet. And here it talks about the trumpet of God. And we'll show that this is also the last trumpet because Paul is also part of it. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. So first dead in Christ. Now this is the same as 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The dead will be raised incorruptible. This is the Christians will be raised incorruptible. And here the dead in Christ will rise first. So they will be rise from the dead and become incorruptible. And we, including Paul, who are alive. Now, Paul thought that he would be alive together, but now we know that he is among those who are dead. So Paul is part of it too. Paul, who, uh, you know, all the Christians who are alive uh, and remain shall be caught up, that means raptured, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So Jesus will come down and there will be the uh, shout and voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead Christians will rise from the dead and the live Christian will be kept uh, raptured together with the dead Christians who are raised from the dead and, and then will always be with the Lord. Okay? So this passage talk about that the time of the rapture is when Jesus' second coming, when Jesus comes back from heaven. Now, when people read the Bible, they will naturally associate this with Matthew chapter 24, when Jesus comes back. But the dispensationalists will say that, no, this is not that second coming, it's another second coming. Uh, it's before, now, let me explain this again. Let me go back to this picture. The pre-tribulation rapture or the mid-tribulation rapture.